Portsmouth, in common with other island and coastal cities, has had to deal with two pressing problems. The need for more land on an island of limited extent and the need to dispose of increasing volumes of waste materials as the city has grown. Portsmouth chose the most obvious and practical solution to these two problems by filling the low-lying marshy coastal fringes and creeks of Portsea Island with a wide variety of dockyard, industrial and municipal waste materials throughout the years. Although some landfilling took place in the 16th and 17th centuries, major landfill and reclamation did not become significant until mid-Victorian times, when the last major expansion of both the dockyard area and the city itself took place. In the first 30 years of the 19th century, incinerators were used and the remaining waste was dumped in substantial creek and mudflat areas on the eastern side of Portsea Island. Wartime rubble was used to cap many of these fields, although landfilling with municipal wastes sometimes occurred to raise the ground to more suitable levels. Many of these sites lie along the planned route for the proposed Aquind Interconnector project. The currently planned route runs from Easney through to Milton Common, then up the Eastern Road and then on to Farlington. Along this route there will be tunnelling and also deep trench digging. The Glory Hole was an arm of Easney Lake in the extreme southeast corner of Portsea Island, which was bunded off and infilled by the Royal Navy between approximately 1914 and 1960. This location was infamous for its decay and filth. A wide variety of naval scrap and waste materials were dumped into this muddy creek, including asbestos from boiler and armaments lagging, lead from submarine and other batteries, mercury from electrical switchgear, zinc and cadmium plated metal objects, and a host of other mainly solid materials. No records of the wastes deposited are available. Arthur Mack knew Lumsden Road before it was built on, a dumping ground for the Navy, before there were controls, before there was a clear appreciation of the dangers. And there used to be the glory hall, that's where the, the, the dockyard tip was, where they used to tip all the actual rubbish out of the dockyard, um, asbestos, tins of uh, anti-fouling paints, uh, there used to be mercury as well, heavy metals. The site was covered over with several centimetres of topsoil and given over to the building of naval married quarters which were constructed on the site between 1955 and 1965. Some of these homes were subsequently declared surplus to Royal Navy requirements and were leased to the City Council for council tenancy during the mid-1980s. In the late 1980s, local building work on a new marina in this area uncovered substantial contamination. Subsequent investigations showed significant quantities of asbestos and various toxic heavy metals close to the surface under the grass cover, although the MOD declared at the time that health risks were minimal. In the early 1990s a further investigation was made and Portsmouth City Council declared the site was unfit for family habitation and immediately offered to rehouse families elsewhere. Forced from their homes with a warning that the earth beneath their feet was putting their health at risk. They should not leave families with young children on a state like this, you're on a time bomb. The ground poisoned by asbestos and heavy metals. Just how many contaminated sites there may be in Britain, nobody knows. There could be as many as 100,000. Some undoubtedly present a health risk. Finding them can be a matter of chance. A quantitative assessment confirmed near-surface lead and asbestos contamination to be the major hazards. Major work was then done to cover the ground and make it a safe place to live. Aquind planned to land their interconnector literally across the road from Lumsden Road and then run it essentially around Eastney Lake before then heading to Milton Common. Milton Common is a very large area of grassland, scrub and ponds located on the edge of Langstone Harbour surrounded by homes, schools, a college and local businesses. It is now a popular place for local residents to walk and exercise and is also a haven for wildlife within the city. Milton Common wildlife diversity is graded as excellent, with nearly 200 species noted plus species designated as nationally rare, nationally scarce and county scarce. The conservation value of the site is flagged as especially important due to the proximity 
to the internationally important Langstone Chichester Harbour areas, which are designated as SSSI, SBA, SAC and Ramsar sites. Milton Common was subjected to a phase of land reclamation by infilling in the 18th and early 20th centuries. However, the majority of the landfilling took place between 1962 and 1970, when a bund was constructed across the mouth of Milton Lake and the confined area was progressively drained and infilled with domestic refuse. There was next to no control on what could be dumped, with stories of a hill of old motorbikes, building waste from factories and bomb sites, leaking scrap vehicles and much more. A borehole drilled in 1992 by the University of Portsmouth identified up to 5 metres of landfill with a cap on the top of just 300 to 400 millimetres of clay and topsoil, showing the depth and the scale of waste on the site. Aquin's own environmental statement, 185483, states Exploratory holes at Milton Common during the 2018 investigation were commonly abandoned short of the 5 metre target due to obstructions, asbestos or underground metallic anomalies. To mitigate, the report says additional mitigation measures should include quote, The trench will need to be excavated in short lengths to minimise odour risk. Aquind have proposed several options at Milton Common. One to cut a trench following the roads surrounding the common and the other to cut right through with a deep trench and no one knowing what could be uncovered and released into the local environment. Eastney and Milton Common are just two areas along the route that could cause contamination issues with others such as Tangier Road, Little Sultans and moving up to Farlington. Currently there is a fine balance of local residents and the harbour and wildlife. Nobody wants Aquin to possibly open Pandora's box full of unknown, toxic contaminants on our city's doorstep. <laughs>